Hi, this is Brett from SR Moto, and I wanted to do a project bike update video for our Honda CRF450L project bike. Uh, this is the dual sport project bike that we're currently working on. I haven't done an update in a little bit on this one, and we've done a few things to it, so I thought it'd be a good time to go over some of those. Um, real quick, just let me mention our website, um, our online store which is soloracer.com. If you go there and go to the CRF 450L parts section, you'll find all the parts that we currently carry for the CRF 450L and the parts that I'll talk about in this video. Uh, we also have a blog, which is at srmoto.com. Uh, there, there's just more photos and details on some of the project bikes. Uh, there should be a link in the upper right corner of this video too that you can click on that'll take you right to the online store. So again, this is our Sierra 450L Dual Sport project bike. We also have a Supermoto project bike we're working on. Uh, this bike's going to be, you know, mostly ridden off-road uh, with a little bit of street riding here and there, but we're kind of setting this up more as, a, as an off-road bike. So I'll kind of talk about a few of the things we've done here recently. Uh, the only performance modification we've done, we just did this uh, a couple days ago. I'll kind of show you up under the seat here. If I can get to it here. We have installed a DinoJet Power Commander 5, which just became available for these bikes, and we do have them on the website. And that is shipping currently with what they're calling their stock improved map which is meant for a bike with a stock exhaust, stock air filter, which is what we currently have on this bike. I uh, haven't really gotten a chance to ride it too much. It's 20 degrees outside here, uh, but I did ride it around yesterday a little bit and uh, it does seem to run a little bit better with that stock improved map. Um, the, the stock bike, I was getting a little bit of low RPM sputtering and stuff like that, especially when you pull up to uh, lights or when you're getting ready to stop the bike it would kind of sputter a little bit that seems to be completely gone um, and it seemed to run really well even though it's 20 degrees outside so I think that stock improved map is going to clean up some of the the fueling problems and give you a little bit better performance uh, obviously they'll have maps later for aftermarket exhausts and stuff I think they might already have a, a map for like a Yoshimura slip-on or something on their website but uh, these do ship with the stock improved map. Uh, so that's pretty much the only performance mod we've done. We're going to do, you know, twin air air filter here at some point. Um, uh, hopefully FMF Q4 full exhaust system at some point. That's kind of what we were shooting for on this bike. Uh, so that's the performance part. Uh, let me talk about the lighting and electrical changes that we've made. Start with the tail light. Uh, this is the 12 o'clock labs integrated tail light and fender eliminator real nice tail light that cleans up the back end of the bike real simple installation plug and play includes the tail light so it replaces the stock tail light with this led tail light it's also got a license plate mount um, and it's designed to be used as either an integrated tail light i'll show you how that works here in a second where the turn signals flash within the tail light itself. Uh, you can use it with your stock turn signals if you want. Uh, we've taken them off this bike and it comes with these little plates that, that bolt up and cover the holes where the stock turn signals were. So let me show you how the turn signals work. They're integrated within the tail light and it's got like five or six different programmable flash types you can do we, we're running the the default scrolling flash but there's you know a couple different ones you can cycle through and try out so if you're going to do a lot of off-road riding and don't want those big turn signals sticking out that can get broken off uh, this is definitely the way to go really really narrows up the, the rear end of the bike still gives you turn signals and a brake light and everything and I'll show you one of the other features of this. Uh, when you hit your brakes, it's got uh, safety brake pulsing built in. So 
it will pulse the brake lights a couple brake light a couple times every time you hit the brakes. You can turn that off if you want, but it is on by default. Real bright, real bright LEDs. Uh, if you're not familiar with 12 o'clock labs, their stuff is real high quality. Uh, they've uh, coated it, coated the LED board with waterproof material to, to help make it more durable. So real good high quality stuff from them. And as mentioned, you can use your rear turn signals. The stock ones on our other bike, we've actually left the stock turn signals on and you just don't wire in the integrated turn signals and uh, your stock turn signals will flash and then this will just operate as a brake light and it'll still give you the safety brake pulsing and everything. So again, that's the 12 o'clock labs, integrated tail light, fender eliminator. It's got an LED light on the bottom too for the license plate. So in the front, what we've done for turn signals, uh, the stock turn signals used to be there, so we've gotten rid of those. And we have our Zeta Armor Handguard, Pro Armor Handguards installed. I'll talk about those here in a second, but one of the options when you order the handguards is these integrated LED turn signals. So we've installed those. Real slick setup, we sell a lot of these for a uh, bunch of different bikes that you know we specialize in WR250Rs, DRZ400s. A lot of people like this integrated turn signal feature. And since this bike uh, comes from the factory with running lights in the front, you know the stock turn signals are always on. Uh, we wanted these to be always on too. Um, so we wired in a 12 o'clock labs running light adapter when we wired in the turn signals and that will allow these LEDs to work as running lights and turn signals. I, I just kind of like the running lights. More lights on the bike, the better in my opinion. So that's how we did the turn signals in the front. I will mention one other thing too. Um, when you order the, the integrated taillight kit, one of the options is, is something called a fixed rate turn signal flasher. Um, that is recommended for these uh, to keep the turn signals, specifically in this case, the front turn signals from hyper flashing and flash, flashing really fast. So we installed the fixed rate flasher on this bike. It installs up under the headlight shroud, real simple plug and play. And then it makes the turn signals flash slow like they're supposed to. So that's 12 o'clock laps fixed rate turn signal flasher. Also installed on the bike is a 12 o'clock labs speedo speedometer calibrator, which will, um, you know, make the speedometer accurate and also the odometer accurate. Uh, again, it's made by 12 o'clock labs. Real simple plug and play device and then you calibrate it to, to make sure the everything's working properly and the speedometer, odometer are accurate. So that's it as far as the lighting and electrical equipment. I'll talk about hand, hand guards and handlebars. Earlier I mentioned the Zeta Pro Armor Handguards. This is our CRF450L Pro Handguard Package, which is the Zeta Pro Armor Handguards. On this bike, we've got the Titanium Silver color installed. I really like the Titanium Silver on this bike. So that's the aluminum part of it, and it's got the black plastic bumpers attached to the outside. Got a real uh, kind of a beefy insert for the end of the handlebar that kind of locks into the handguard. So that's kind of the main part of the handguard itself. Optionally, you can add on the Zeta XC protectors, the plastic protectors that screw to the front of it. Uh, we've got the Zeta XC protectors in red. Uh, you can get them in a couple different colors, white, black, blue, red, green, you name it. Um, they're also available in a, a Zeta XC Pro protector, which is just a slightly larger plastic protector. Same basic shape, but just a little bit bigger. Uh, those you can only get in white or black. And then, as mentioned earlier, the optional integrated LED turn signals. Uh, we added on. You can order those if you want them and, and get rid of the, the big stock turn signals. So that's the handguards. Again, it's the 
Sierra 450L Pro handguard package. As far as handlebars go, uh, we have replaced the stock 7 8 inch Renthals uh, with Pro Taper Contours, which are 1 and an eighth inch handlebars, and we went with the CR High Bend on this bike, and we used the Pro Taper Universal Rubber Handlebar Mounts uh, to mount these. That replaces the, the stock handlebar mounts with these oversized bar mounts and they come in black. Uh, sits a little bit higher than stock. This, this setup right here is maybe half inch to three quarters of an inch taller than the stock bars, which I kind of like. I wanted a little bit taller bar. Uh, we also, at the same, while we were in there doing this, we replaced the rubber cones, the OEM rubber cones with uh, Pro Taper Sport Bar Mount cones which are just supposed to be a little bit more durable than the than the stock rubber ones. It's real simple to do while you're replacing the handlebar mounts. Uh, grips, uh, we do Pro Taper pillow tops on all of our bikes. So that's what we're running on this bike. Uh, throttle tube, we also replaced the plastic throttle tube when we were doing all this. And we run uh, G2 Tamer throttle tubes. Uh, it's a nice aluminum throttle tube, has a pop-off end cap to, that you'll want to use to, you know, allow the handguards to be installed, the inserts for the handguards. And the Tamer throttle tubes are nice. We use them on a lot of these off-road bikes. Uh, gives you a little bit better throttle control off-road um, and also helps a little bit with the snatchy throttle that some of these fuel-injected bikes have. So that's a G2 Tamer throttle tube. Uh, mirrors, definitely got rid of the stock mirrors, replaced them with our double take enduro mirrors. We have a package deal on the website where you get a pair of them. Uh, these thread right into the, to the stock perches, little ball studs and then the ram mounts. Uh, so you can get a pair of them if you want. We also sell them individually if you just want one mirror. Super popular uh, for these off-road and dual sport bikes. Uh, a couple advantages over the stock mirrors. Uh, stock mirrors can break real easily if you drop the bike and they can snap off uh, sometimes at the perch and cause you know some damage there. Uh, these utilize ram mounts so if you hit them they'll kind of just flex or rotate out of the way. Um, they're also real easy to remove from the bike. You just take the ram mounts off and then they also will fold down out of the way too so if you're riding off-road you can Kind of fold them down out of the way if you don't need them. So that's the double take enduro mirrors. Okay, so that's about it for handlebars and hand guards. I think I mentioned the triple clamp mounts. That's that's the way these hand guards mount. Uh, no clamps on the handlebars. They're mounted up to the top triple clamp. I think I forgot to mention that. That comes with the Pro handguard package. Uh, as far as the seat, um, we've replaced that stock seat with a Seat Concepts Comfort Seat. This is a complete bolt-on seat. Just pop the stock seat off and this bolts right in place. Um, these come in a couple different colors. Uh, you can get them all black like this. We're running the black gripper top with black carbon vinyl sides. Um, you can get them in a, in a low slip top, which is a little bit less grippy than this gripper material. You can also get them with red sides if you want. I kind of like the all black on the bike. A lot more comfortable than the stock seat. They're about two inches wider at the part you sit on. And then they taper up as you get close to the gas tank. So just a lot more comfortable than the stock seats. Um, this is the standard foam height. You got a couple options when you order these as far as the foam height. You can go standard foam height, which is about the same as stock, or you can go with the low, which is about three quarters of an inch lower. So if, if the bike's a little tall on you, that low seat is kind of nice. I've actually got the low on our Supermoto. So that's the Seat Concepts Comfort Complete Seat. Uh, foot pegs. We have replaced the stock foot pegs with uh, pivot pegs. 
Uh, the guy that's going to do most of the riding on this bike, he uses these pivot pegs on all his bikes. So that's what we're going with on this one. Uh, I think these will be nice on this bike. Um, I've had some complaints from people about being able to get their feet under the shift lever and stuff. The nice thing about these pivot pegs is they rotate with your feet. So you can actually kind of rotate the peg down and get your foot down at a better angle to get under the shift lever. Um, so that's why they're called pivot pegs, you know, obviously. Um, a lot of guys swear by these. Uh, so something to consider. Uh, real nice width to them. They're like 60 millimeter width, so they're a little bit wider than the stock pegs. They're rebuildable, um, serviceable. Just a real nice foot peg. So that's the pivot pegs. Comes with all the hardware to mount them. They, they have their own springs, so you don't reuse your stock foot peg springs. Uh, let's see, protective stuff, or just stuff on the body in general. Flatland Racing skid plate, aluminum skid plate. These have been real popular. Does a real nice job of protecting the frame and the, the sides of the engine. Made out of aluminum, has an oil drain plug hole in the bottom so you can drain your oil without taking it off, although we usually take it off. It's pretty simple to get off the bike. Uh, it uses uh, stock mounting points in the front. And in the rear, it's got its kind of own little bracket that they use to bolt it up in the rear. Does a good job of covering the water pump. So that's the Flatland Racing skid plate. Uh, a couple other minor things, Zeta axle blocks in red. At some point Zeta will have a red billet kit, I'm sure, for these bikes, which will basically be a bunch of red billet parts. So for now we just did the axle blocks in red. Clutch cable guide from Zeta also in red. Zeta rear brake clevis in red. Uh, TM Design Works rear caliper cover in black. Get these in red as well. It's just a lot stronger than that stock piece. Uh, Z Carbon pipe guard for the header pipe. Now we have replaced the tires on the bike, front and rear. In the rear, We've got Dunlop D606s in a 130, 90 by 18. Real popular dual sport rear tire. We're running Michelin tubes and we did put rim locks on it. In the front, Pirelli MT21 in a 90, 90, 21 size. And again, Michelin tubes and rim locks as well. It's a real popular front tire for these dual sport bikes. Uh, tank bag. We just installed the Diablo Pro tank bag from Giant Loop. Fits the bike real nice. Sits real far forward on the bike so it's not in your way. It sits over top of the gas cap. And I'll kind of show you here real quick though. If you want to get gas, you just unzip the tank from the harness way around and it flips open and you get access to your gas cap. You can also take it completely off the bike. It zips all the way around. So you leave the harness on the bike, you know, once you get it strapped on and then you can take the bag off real easily just by unzipping it. And it just zips right back on. So that's the Giant Loop Diablo Pro tank bag. Uh, get a lot of questions on lift stands. We use a DRC lift stand. It's the H HC2 lift stand. It works really well. It's adjustable for height. And you just slide it under the bike once you get it to the height you want and use the little red 
uh, pedal, foot pedal to press down on and it'll lift the bike up in the air. We use these on all of our dual sports and supermotos. So that's the DRC HC2 lift stand. Uh, a couple of things we're going to be doing here shortly. Uh, IMS three gallon fuel tank. We're going to do the natural color on this bike and probably the black on our supermoto. So that'll get us another gallon of fuel. That's going on sh next week, I think. Um, we are going to do at some point here an aftermarket exhaust and a, probably FMF Q4 and then a twin air, air filter. And we'll do some, some more updates as more parts become available for these bikes. There's not a lot of stuff available for these yet since the bike's so new, but there is more and more stuff coming out all the time. So kind of stay tuned to the channel, to the YouTube channel, and also the website for, for more updates. So I think that's about it. Again, our website is soloracer.com. If you go there, go to the CRF450L parts section for all of these parts that I talked about. And our email address is there. If you have any questions about anything, shoot us an email, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And yeah, stay tuned for updates. We'll be doing more videos as uh, we continue to do things. And, and summer will be here soon, so we'll be riding the bike more. It's winter here now, we haven't really been riding much, so uh, we'll be doing more updates as we get more miles on the bike. So again, it's Brett from soloracer.com and SR Moto with our Sierra 450L project bike. Thanks for watching.